Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we are going to be comparing all seven helmets. Now I did this before back when there was only, let's see, I did it to the first three I think. And then since then I don't know we've compared the helmets, I don't remember now. I'll have to go and look, but I'm pretty sure I just compared the first three. And now we have seven which is a little weird because Mega slipped in the red one, uh, not really as part of a wave. Um, but yeah, I want to just take a look at all of them, see which ones are the best. I, I want to I wanna figure out like if there's one that stands out above all the rest, and if there's one that is like way beneath all the rest. So first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at all of the helmets themselves. And since they're all the same helmet, we are just going to be basically looking at them color-wise. So let me go ahead and arrange them in release order here because we had blue, yellow, red. No, no, wait, that's not right. Blue, yellow, green, red. And then this next wave. Well, silver kind of was revealed first and then like that. And it's going off of the camera because there's, there's, yeah, that's, that's a lot of helmets. Um, so I wanted to, to see which ones of these are the most unique. I'm pretty sure that all of you can already pretty much guess this. The greens, no, the greens are not the most unique here. Um, I do, I do like them. I think they look good. I would have preferred that they just pick one green and go with it. I think maybe this slightly metallic green would have been the way to go. I don't think that doing two was a great idea because they just look redundant next to each other. I mean, you can see the differences a little bit, but they just look kind of redundant. So I'm knocking them both off the list because of that. And yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think that we really needed two greens. Um, the blue, I don't feel like there's a ton that stands out about it, and you can probably tell I've already thought about this a bit, particularly in this section, the colors. I haven't been able to come to a huge conclusion about the dioramas and the figures yet, but we'll get there. But here, I feel like the blue, mm, it's not bad. I'm not saying any of these are bad, I'm just saying the, we're going for the most unique here. So the blue, the blue is not the most unique. And then... I think, I think you can probably guess where I'm going with this. We are going to remove red. And then, so I'd say just because, you know, we get a lot of red Spartans in Mega form. So red is, I don't feel like it's that unique. So I think this right here is the three most unique helmets of all of them. The orange lands a spot at the end just because we don't see orange very often. But if you want to just two top, these two are definitely it. The yellow and the black is just a combination we don't see on figures very often. And it just is very striking on display. And then the silver and blue, whoa, come back here. The silver and blue is, we've gotten, we've gotten the combination a couple times, but it just looked really good. All the other helmets have gold visors to some shade, but these two stand out because their visors are different. And they have pretty different colors as well. So, helmet-wise, if you just want a helmet to display and you want one that looks unique, one of these two will definitely be your best bet. Here comes the hard part, though. We have all of these dioramas, and we got to figure out which one... Well, I want to say let's pick the top three, and then we'll see if we can pick just one out of all of them. So let's go through, look at them one by one real quick. Starting in the first wave of releases, we have the Last Spartan Standing Diorama. Now, this one is one that relies on the helmet a bit to get the whole scene working. You have this little arm here that you can pose the infected figure jumping. They suggest that you put that on the helmet because you can attach the diorama to the helmet by this little piece here and then have him like jumping in. However, you can easily plug it in onto any of these hollow studs here and just, you know, have your figure kind of suspended. And personally, I think that looks better. Then we have some nice little landscape building with these greens here. We have a rock, and then we have a suggestion of some sort of uh, facility or something, some wreckage here. So overall, 
This is a very well-rounded feeling diorama for the few pieces that it uses. It gets the idea across instantly, and I don't really feel like it needed to have anything else added. Now, we're not really considering the figures here. We're just considering how the diorama looks with the figures on there. We'll take a look at the figures themselves in a bit. But this one is very strong. I think it's, it's very well-rounded and definitely is a strong contender for the top spot. The Capture the Flag helmet is, I feel like, a little bare bones here. Um, there's a huge plus in the fact that we get two flags. We get the blue one, and then we can interchange it with the red one. I don't actually know where I put my red one. I think it's in my box of extra pieces somewhere. But we do get a, a red, and we do get a blue, and they're like the translucent to show that they're like a hologram. And so that's really cool. However, the diorama itself, especially if we remove the figures looks very bare. It gets the scene across well, but I'm not so sure the greenery here is the best choice with the like marbled tan color. I think they should have picked one or the other because they have like a fusion coil here. So I think they should have gone with either, you know, go all in with the uh, industrial look or maybe add some more greens to make it look overgrown. But as it is, it feels a little bare and like an in-between and like it maybe isn't sure which direction it wants to go. The last of the first three helmets, Skull Control, has a pretty solid diorama. You instantly can tell that this is a very industrial multiplayer map. We have like this little walkway here and either some piping or a railing. There's even a bit of a curve here to suggest that there's more off in that direction and you could easily add more if you wanted to. The figures can be posed up and around. This hoop here takes up a lot of space and kind of limits posing a bit, but you can squeeze a figure on this side. And then there's also the little balcony walkway for you to work with. So there's plenty of options here. And then the like skull pickup zone looks very good. Kind of pops out of the scene a little bit. And then of course you get the actual skull on there. So Pretty well done. I would say that this one is also another strong contender for the top spot. It definitely knows what it wants to be and does it pretty well. The Escape Helmet was kind of a weird in-between release. It wasn't part of a full wave, it just kind of replaced Skull Control in the lineup and so it was a little weird. Now the diorama here is funky because it's not so much a diorama as it is a bunch of removable parts. We have this really nice barrier. Looks fantastic. There's plenty of spots to position it. Then we have this little AI um, station here, tripod station that can set up and he can kind of watch things. But they're not attached. Like they just kind of, you can attach him. So like, you know, pop him on here. But then this, uh, there's not really room for this so much. You can kind of set it off to the side. And this could go off to the side. The only thing that's really, truly a part of the diorama are these little flood, fleshy bits that are coming out of the ground. And, you know, that provides plenty of spaces for posing of the figures. But as a diorama, there's nothing real cohesive here. And it's just kind of a bunch of pieces, which is great for making your own scenes. But it does feel a little bit disconnected because it really is just disconnected. Like I can't pick this up as one unit and carry it away because I'm going to lose my little barrier. So that makes it as a diorama fall behind a little bit. The Fiesta helmet was the first of the new wave to be leaked. Um, leaks and reveals are kind of one of the same for Mega these days, but this was the first that we saw and it's, confusing because nobody can really seem to figure out what these blue barriers are. I figured I just didn't know the game mode and there was something I didn't know about, but nobody seems to know what these blue barriers are. And the fact that there's this extra green bits kind of throws things off. Um, I do understand using the green for the weapons clip to the ground because it's a bit like uh, HUD highlighting a section of it, you know, to show you that there's a weapon there. I think that's cool. And the barriers themselves look pretty cool. It's just the color schemes and the positioning is a bit odd. You can position a figure behind this one if you wanted to. This one is kind of, I don't know. It's just kind of there. And this one is also meant to be attached to the helmet. However, it does work pretty well on its own. 
uh, it almost looks like there's some stairs over here and you have all those weapons on the ground. So clearly a bunch of chaos has happened. Uh, not a bad one, but when you're looking at it, it's just confusing and it's a little hard to just get a full idea of the scene. Uh, what, what might be happening here. It's just, it's just like it's there. And then the green throws everything off. So it's not bad. It's just confusing. The stockpile helmet elicited a lot of excitement when it was revealed because of the new pine tree piece. Now, as a diorama, this builds the scene well. Like, you can tell what's going on, but then it feels a little bit bare. Uh, a little piece of grass or something would have been good, maybe, or maybe a bit of texturing to show maybe there's, like, another piece of Forerunner tech over here. Something but it just feels a little bare as is. There's plenty of space to get your figures in a confrontation or act like they're going off somewhere else, but it does feel a little bare, and around the back, it looks a little weird. And then the pine tree itself, the, the exciting part, it doesn't fit together that great. It kind of turns into a helicopter and wants to fly away. So that's also a bit of a bummer. Diorama-wise, this was a little lower than I was expecting it to be. Uh, just because it, it is a little bare. And then the one part that really makes it exciting likes to just come off all the time. And it gets kind of frustrating, to be honest. Like, I didn't want a helicopter. I wanted a pine tree. And then last but not least, we have the zone control helmet. Now, this is another one that was meant to be attached to the helmet. This little bridge here can come up and kind of hinge to fit on. Now, you can just kind of leave it as a bridge sticking out, but you can also hinge it down and it closes up pretty nicely. So I feel like it can stand pretty well on its own. And we have multiple levels to use here. The skull control helmet did something similar, but we have an actual ladder this time, and then like a full area to pose up here. We get some really nice pieces. Uh, the shaping, the way they've used them is really nice. The zone area itself looks good, and we get both a green and a pink helmet to make sure both sides have an equal opportunity to capture the zone. And I don't know, it just works out pretty well because you can tell it's supposed to be, again, a kind of industrial area, especially with the orange to give off like almost warning, uh, warning sign vibes. And even without the helmet that's supposed to attach this, it works out pretty well. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm curious, you could easily kind of fit these together like that and that actually works out kind of kind of all right interesting in my mind i think it's pretty clear which ones here work the best as standalone dioramas and we are going to just kind of eliminate the ones that i think don't quite make it and then we're left with these three these three i feel like stand by themselves really really well and you know, you get the whole story just by looking at it. They don't require their helmets along with them to make them work. And they're just really well fleshed out. I gotta say, though, if I had to give a number one here, it would probably go to the infection just because the amount of plants that they use and the rock and the extra little bit of, like, machinery or building that's here, it just really well rounds it out. And then these two, I feel like are pretty equal because they're, they're, I feel like they're fairly comparable. You know, we have the piece of raised um, landscape uh, structure and then the objective and they just work out really well. This one, again, it is supposed to work with the helmet and it has more presence when this is up and like moving like that, like uh, raised, but it definitely stands perfectly well by itself. So I think Last Spartan Standing certainly takes the top place, but then Skull Control and uh, Zone Control are both very close seconds. Now we have probably the most important aspect of these helmets, the figures. Because, let's be honest here, that's really what we're buying the helmets for. Like, really the main reason. The rest of it is cool, but the figures, we would probably buy these figures by themselves if Mega just released them in the figure 2 packs. So, which figures which which pairs of figures because we're not just going to be looking at like which figure is the best we're looking at which set of figures are the best like 
um, because they come in two. So we're going to look at them as a pair. So let's go ahead, jump in, and we will start once again from the beginning with the last Spartan standing. The two Spartans in the last Spartan standing set are a glow-in-the-dark Gungnir, aka infected Gungnir, and a Spartan Commando. Now, the Gungnir was really exciting because this was the first of the new glow-in-the-dark figures. It had been a while since we had gotten true glow-in-the-dark figures. We had gotten those green like, gummies in the Faithful vs. Fallen pack, but before that, there was actually like true infected Spartans like this, and it had been a while since we saw any. So this was super exciting. The silver and the new glow-in-the-dark, or I shouldn't say new, it was a returning glow-in-the-dark, all looked really good. I still am very impressed with this figure. Uh, especially the energy sword, green old-style energy sword, looks fantastic. And then the commando was also great. He had a you know, very, very Halo look to him. It's very uh, classic Halo, the metallic green kind of, muted colors overall uh, I like the asymmetrical look especially and then he had a bulldog shotgun now this figure is absolutely best when you get the Spartan uh, was that Spartan 4 customizer no Spartan 3 customizer pack and use this sapper chest plate which has the painted shells that's the real drawback to this figure is the fact that he has no paint on the chest or on the shells for his uh, waist unit either so that was a bit of a bummer and takes a knock off of these figures um, if he had come with the painted chest plate, that would have been a very, very strong contender for first place. But as it is, these guys are pretty darn solid. It's really hard to go wrong with these. The Capture the Flag helmet came with a blue version of Master Chief, uh, albeit without the numbers. And he looks pretty good. It's a very nice color blue. He looks pretty solid all around. No extra print, but... I don't think he really needed it. This is the first and as of right now only full recolor of Chief's armor set. We have an almost full recolor, but I'll talk about that later. And then his rifle is this shock rifle, which is one of the best shock rifles Mega has made. It's got the nice brown print on the handle here and here. It, it wobbles a little in the hand, but not bad. But yeah, very solid figure right there. And then the other figure was this Trailblazer. He comes with this AR, just plain black AR, which I'm honestly surprised that the shock rifle came painted because it's kind of a trend in these sets to not have painted weapons. This guy has a lot of Mark 7 pieces. He's got this big bulky chest plate, like what I use on my Sig Fig. And then he has a Trailblazer helmet, which looks pretty good, although the plastic color is somewhat brighter than that of the rest of the figure so that's a bit of a bummer but there is a lot of print all over that head visor looks pretty good and he's a very bulky boy for sure he kind of looks like he would be some sort of a heavy but he doesn't have really heavy weapons to use here really good pairing here i think we have a bit of the old with chief's very very recognizable helmet and then a bit of the new with the new trailblazer so pretty solid pair. I feel like it's a little more generic maybe than some of the others, but it's a very solid pair. So the two figure pairs we've looked at so far are pretty darn strong, but I feel like Skull Control really comes out swinging and is just trying to shove its way to first place here because these are two of the most unique just in-set Spartans that I've seen in a while. Yellow, first of all, we don't get a lot of yellow uh spartans in general and when they are made they tend to be not the greatest like they're not the most well received but this guy i feel like does yellow really well he has bumblebee vibes to him and he's almost a full mark 7 he's just got a different chest plate which is pretty cool i do like that chest plate i don't know what it's called but it looks pretty cool it maybe could have used some print but again these are inset Spartan so they're not going all out on the print except for in some cases like the head the head is it's got a lot it's got the gray back here it's got the gray on the top blue visor which is fantastic they could have easily done something weird like gold and had like minimal contrast but the blue contrasts really nicely and all the rest of the print pops super well he comes with a clip to carry his needler and the needler is painted it's very banished looking it's red it's got the painted needles so, really cool figure. And then, this guy right here is somehow even better. Dark blue and silver, which is a really just 
phenomenal color pairing. And then the head has a ton of print, lots of silver, again, a blue visor. This one has low contrast, but it works because of the sheen. It gives it some depth. Uh, silver Mark Seven chest plate, no print, looks fantastic. And then he came with a chain gun, which was one of the first times we had seen the chain gun in a while, I think since Halo Heroes George. Mega's been using it a fair bit recently, which I'm very happy about. But this was a great kind of reintroduction, and it looks fantastic. And you can swap these weapons back and forth, and it looks great either way. The Escape Helmets figures have been kind of divisive. Some people like them, and some people really hate them. I think the Anubis has been pretty well received for the most part. Dark gray and yellow looks pretty good. Silver visor, uh, new female torso piece at the time. It's been used a fair amount since, but it looks pretty good. Uh, battle rifle, old style. Well, it's not really old style. It's the, the Halo 4 and 5 version, and it has a rail for you to add stuff. And yeah, it looks good. Overall, very solid figure. The figure that everybody's not really sure about is this Hermes Spartan here who's got some funky stuff going on with the undersuit. His arms are entirely this off-white, and then he's got the gray undersuit still. The red Mark VII chest plate is fantastic to get, but again, it doesn't blend real well with the helmet. The helmet is a very... It's much brighter and more, more solid. It's not really metallic, whereas the shoulders and the chest plate are, are very, very metallic. There is a lot of print on there. Looks fantastic. Again, it's kind of surprising because they don't often do print. I personally think that it's a pretty cool design. Uh, he comes armed with an SMG. He's a very unique looking Spartan. And I think that's a, a very good thing. I just know that for a lot of people, he's a little too busy looking. The, the color scheme is too busy and there needed to be less of the white, possibly. It did give us the red Mark VII chest plate though. So that's a huge plus. Now, the Fiesta helmet kind of broke the trend that Mega had been following, which was you'd get a helmet, and there would be a Spartan that matched the color of that helmet in the set. This set comes in a silver helmet, and we do not have a silver Spartan. We have this lime green and kind of off-white Zvezda. I know a lot of people keep thinking this is Spartan Aster. There is no such thing as Spartan Aster. For some reason, Mega labeled their Zvezda Aster. Aster is some code word for the Mjolnir project in the beginning. So I don't really know what the confusion there is, but this is a Zvezda, and specifically it's a Zvezda with some sort of armor plating attachment similar to a Gungnir. Uh, I don't know why Mega chose to do that. Zvezda without it looks similar to the EVA helmet, but I don't know. It's very unique. Um, there's a lot of print on this one. You can see a bit of the visor poking through. It almost looks uh, Transformer-ish with the way the eyes are. I think the lens here could have used some paint but we definitely have plenty of other paint. The back paint is kind of meh on every Spartan uh, I've seen from this set. They, they just can't seem to do that right. The lime green tends to be a hit or miss when Mega is using it, but I think this time it was definitely a hit. It just pairs really well, and I really like the use of the security shoulder. Figure currently has a plasma rifle, but the weapons are kind of uh, not a solid part of the figures because the set comes with so many other weapons. Other Spartan is an Anubis with that big beefy chest plate, very asymmetrical color scheme with the one orange arm and the one red arm. And overall, it's just a very bold color scheme. The bright orange and the dark red and the red helmet. I really like the fact that we get a red helmet here. Uh, red Anubis looks really good. I gave him a gravity hammer just because the, the size of the figure makes it look like he would use a heavy weapon like that, but you can easily swap it out for any other weapon in the set. Now, I know this might be a little bright for some people, but overall, I think it's a really good looking figure. So very solid pair, very different pair than what we've seen before but a very, very solid pair. The stockpile helmet had some interesting choices. So not only do we have some interesting colors and a chest plate that can be used to make Fred um, more accurate, but we have use of some old shoulder armors. I thought these were new, but I'm pretty sure they came on um, Tanaka. I'm pretty sure that was who had it originally. And then a reuse of a new helmet, which is the new... Argus helmet. 
Uh, I was not so sure about the Argus when I first saw the set, but it actually looks fantastic. The color is great. The fact that there's print on the chest and shoulders is great. The visor is done pretty well. And it just overall is a very good figure. And then the dark red is something we don't see very often. The armor mixing here is fantastic. I love this helmet in particular, Fred's old helmet. It just looks really good. Um, I think it's like a Mark IV B. I think that's what that is. And yeah, overall, just a really solid figure. It's not a dark red we've really seen before, as far as I can tell. And it's a good, uh, it's a very good one. I, I'm definitely wanting to see more like this. Weapon in this set are a black commando, which as far as I can tell, that's the only place to get a black one at the time of the recording of this video. And then we have a plain silver shock rifle, which is kind of a bummer because we don't really need more shock rifles. Mega's been obsessed with this shock rifle mold and they need to stop. That's the really only downside here. Um, it's just side by side. These figures are a great contrast. They have great pieces and overall are just Oh, really good. If I were rating these in terms of numbers, I'd probably give these guys mm, an 8 or 9 out of 10. And then last but not least, we have the zone control figures. These guys really pop. So we have a, or I should say this guy and this girl, because this is a female Spartan using the newer female torso that we've seen before uh, on a couple of the figures we've looked at. And the pink color returns. I love it when Mega uses this hot pink. It shows up on camera as super, super vibrant, whereas in person, it's a little bit more matte and just looks really solid. And I really like that. I like the fact that we're getting a Mark IV helmet in pink for the first time. That gives us a lot of options. And we have, here's what I was saying before about almost getting another full chief. We almost get a full pink chief. We just have the wrong chest plate and helmet. She comes armed with a bulldog shotgun, which looks pretty good. We've gotten a lot of them, but it's a piece that I'm pretty happy with, so I'm glad to get more. Yeah, definitely going to pop on a shelf full of other figures. And then we had another Zvezda. So this guy has less print on his head than the other guy. You can just still see like the little eyes there, and then there's gray. But that's all the print. No, Nothing on the back. That's all. This green, though. This green is a new color. I don't believe Mega's ever used this shade of green before, and it looks great. I love this shade of green. It's it's perfect. I really want to see them use it more. We get some recolored shoulders. We get the chest plate in green. I'm really hoping to see a full Mark VII in green like this at some point. And then the weapon is a Ravager. This is one of the first places we could get the Ravager and it looks really good. The power cells on this one were a bit mushy looking in terms of the mold. I'm not sure if that was just because of it being in the first wave and they hadn't, I don't know, they hadn't gotten the machines calibrated or what. But it's not really a big bummer just because the weapon itself looks so good overall. So less detail, less painted detail on these two than some of the other figures. But just color wise and armor choices and weapon choices, Mega did a great job. Picking just two or three pairs is kind of difficult because there's so many different ways we could rank these. We could rank them by um, armor set, you know, go full subjective and just say, oh, well, I like these armors best. I like these armors best. We could go by the amount of printed detail and rank them that way. We could go by the color choices and how rare the different colors are and how often Mega uses them so on. But I think I, I kind of want to try and pick two that are the best overall. Now, these two back here definitely win out in the detail category, especially the Hermes, but I feel like so many people are very divided on whether or not this guy is a good mix of colors or not, that I don't think we can rank them in the top. So unfortunately, I'm going to remove them. I personally really like this figure, but... I can also see where people are coming from when they say he's too busy looking. Um, I also will remove these two because as much as I like this guy in particular, the blue is fantastic. They just don't really stand out from the other figures. They don't stand out from figures in the past because we've gotten a lot of blue and a lot of red. Now we're down to these, uh, these five, five pairs. And this is more difficult because 
these ones are all really good. Especially all three of the new ones are really good. Uh, but, but, I am going to remove these because I definitely think that they're a bit vibrant for a lot of people's tastes. I've heard some people saying that they don't particularly like how bright they are. They don't particularly like the lime green. And that makes it hard to pick these guys as some of the top. Again, I personally really like it, especially the Anubis. I think he looks fantastic. But I also understand that it's very bright and maybe not very Halo feeling to some people. So now we're down to four. And this is really difficult. But I think I am removing these guys. Purely in favor of these here. Those guys, it's, despite the fact that they don't have very much printed detail, the coloring is fantastic, and the weapons are fantastic, but they are not the number one spot. I am definitely, pretty much no questions asked, giving the number one spot to the Skull Control Helmet in terms of uniqueness of figures, uh, choice of weapons, all of that. They just, they're just really good. Uh... Sure, the yellow's bright, but it's very well balanced by the silver and dark blue. So if you like the darker figures, there's something for you here. If you like the brighter figures, there's something for you here. If you like the heavy weapons, there's something for you. If you like the smaller weapons, there's something for you. Then, Escape Helmet, or sorry, not Escape Helmet, Last Spartan Standing Helmet, comes in second place. Sure, the Commando doesn't have the printed chest, but it's really hard to argue with a glow-in-the-dark Gungnir, especially one so well executed. And then I've already explained my reasons for why these two are in this list. They just pop. They have great weapons. And so overall, I think that these are the top three sets of figures. So as a conclusion to all of that, we just went through three different ways of ranking these helmets. And Skull Control landed almost every single one in the top spot. Um, the diorama was slightly lower than the last Spartan standing, but it's still really solid. It just works really well. You have spaces to pose. It builds the scene. The helmet stands out really well. It's a great combination of colors, and the figures are phenomenal. So if I had to say that there was one helmet that was the absolute best above all the other seven, it would for sure be the skull control. Especially because there is a painted skull here. It's really well done. I didn't really look at that as part of like the figure's and I didn't really consider it particularly in the diorama, but it is a very nice accessory. So, if I were to rank them all, this guy would be at the top. Now, I haven't thought about all the other ones and which one I would put in the second and third and blah, blah, blah. Although, actually, no, I did think about second. Uh, Last Spartan Standing is second. Let me grab that helmet. Even though the helmet itself did not rank in the most unique helmets, the figures and the diorama kind of carry it. And then the rest, kind of, I feel like they're all fairly even. But this one certainly stands out, at least to me, above all the rest. Unfortunately, it is the most rare now, because Mega kind of cut it from the wave in favor of the red helmet, which is a bummer. And that, that made me fairly disappointed when I heard that, and that it was like being pulled from the shelves all over the place, and just kind of disappearing. So, that's a bummer, because it's absolutely fantastic. I really love this helmet. I think the figures are great. And, you know, I, I could probably keep talking about how great this set is um, for a while. But bottom line is, out of all seven helmets, if there was one to be called the, the one helmet to rule them all, it would be this one right here. But I'm curious, which helmet would you rank in the number one spot? Uh, which set of figures? Maybe your top helmet and your top set of figures are different. Uh, in terms of the helmets themselves, which one is your favorite? I am very curious, so let me know down in the comments below. And have you been able to collect all seven of them? Do you even want to collect all seven of them? There's kind of a lot of options here. Mega has given us a lot of options. Like, I'm just looking at the figures here, and there's just so much. From seven helmets, that's 14 different figures, and none of them feel redundant. That's not something I really talked about, but none of these figures really feel redundant, which is really good because I feel like it would have been kind of easy to uh, reuse figures here. 
and kind of skimp, but no, they've been some of the most unique figures we've gotten in terms of just generic Spartans. And it's just, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of display options. There's a lot of play options. The helmets themselves give a lot of options. So really, really happy with this line. I'm hoping it continues for a while. And who knows, maybe another one will come along and dethrone the skull control as the number one helmet. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.